all, welcome to the channel DevOps Tech Stack. I hope you all are doing safe and sound. Today, I am back with day four video on interview series for DevOps. The very first question in my list is, let's say if you have set up the passwordless authentication between two Linux boxes, but you are still prompted for a password when you are attempting to do SSH. So there are few things or there are few troubleshooting steps which you can perform if the SSH connectivity is not working. So let's talk about those steps one by one. The very first thing what you can check is the permission on the .ssh directory. Okay. So this directory exists inside the home folder of the user. So just check the permission on the SSH directory and the files. So make sure that the .ssh directory and its content on both the client and server have the correct permissions. So the .ssh directory should have the permission, which permission it should have? It should have the permission 700, okay? Means read, write and execute for the owner or for the user, that is the root one. And the files within it should have the permissions of 600, okay? Right? Now, if that permission is not correct, then in that case, you can use the chmod command to set the correct permissions if required, okay? Now, the next thing what you need to check is the key file names and the location. So, you need to make sure that the public and private key files are located in the correct directories and have the correct names. So by default, the public key name should always be the id underscore rsa dot pub and the private key name is id underscore rsa, okay? And the public key should always be placed inside the dot ssh. Inside that directory, you will have one more file called as the authorized underscore keys and here you need to paste your public key, right? Whatever the public key you have, that is idrsa.pub, that public key you need to paste inside the authorized key on the server, inside the .ssh directory, there is a file, inside that you need to paste the public key. Apart from that, what you can check, apart from that, next thing you need to check is the SSH agent. You need to make sure that the SSH agent is running on the client machine. You can check if the agent is running by running the command like SSH agent is the one command that you can run and you can check that whether that SSH agent is running on your client machine or not. Apart from that, if nothing is working out, then you can check few log files also. So you check the system log files that exist inside the var log directory, okay? Here you check the log files. So to ensure, just to make sure that uh, everything is working fine or not. If, uh, if you get some log over here, that would be pretty helpful for you. Apart from that, what you can check? You can check the SSH configuration. So where is our SSH configuration? That is again placed inside the etc SSH. And then you have the file called as the SST config. So here you need to make sure on the server to ensure that password authentication is disabled or not. Look for the line password authentication inside that file and it is recommended to set it to yes. Otherwise change is to no. And after that, you need to restart your SSS service, right? So few things which you need to check like if your SSH connectivity is not working, just make sure that correct permission is placed on the .ssh directory and its content with whatever the contents are there inside that particular directory. You need to make sure the correct permissions are there or not. Uh, apart from that, you need to check whether your correct public key is placed inside the authorized key file or not. Apart from that, you can check the system log files that is placed under the var log directory. And then you need to check that uh, SSD config file, whether the password authentication is disabled or not. So few things, whatever I have discussed that you can answer in your interview that these are the troubleshooting steps which I'm going to perform if the SSH connectivity is not working between two Linux boxes. Okay, I hope now you are clear with the very first question. Let's discuss about the next question. That is, let's say user root has created a file called as secret with some permission. But what you want, you want that file should be 
it was allowed to be opened by only the root user and another user called as test so how this can be achieved what all steps you are going to do to achieve this particular target so let's discuss about this part so the very first thing what you are going to do you need to create a file right you need to have a file called as a secret so how you are going to create a file so you have the command sudo touch and then the file name for us the file name is the secret so it is going to create a empty file with the name secret and that is owned by the root because we have created with the sudo right apart from that the next step what you are going to do the next step is you are going to change the permission for this particular file so how you are going to change the permission for this particular file ch mode after that 640 and then the file name so what does this 640 denotes so it is denoting that the first six is denoting that we are giving the read and write permissions to the owner of this particular file so the owner is the root the next is the read permission for the group and after that no permissions for others means everyone else i am giving no permissions so okay after this we are going to set the owner of this file to the root and the group to the test so how to change that ownership so for that we have the command ch own after that we are making the owner as the root that is the root one is the owner of this particular file and beside that we are changing the ownership to the group test for the file secret so this is how you are going to change the permissions of this particular secret file with these permissions and ownership settings only the root user and the test user when inside that test group you will have the test user so they will only be having the access to access this particular secret file let's say this uh, test group or user doesn't exist then in that case you can always use the user add command to create a new user called as test so i i hope you got the high level overview on how you can change the permission of any file or how you can change the ownership of any particular file right now let's come back to the third question in the list that is write a command that will look for files with an extension .sh and has the occurrence of the string scale in it anything is fine right any string you want to search in all the files which are having the extension .sh so how you are going to write that particular command so the command is find you want to find the files right finding the file in the current directory right i'm currently finding all the files which are having .sh dot sh extension in the current working directory so then i am going to find the file based on the name so here you are passing the argument name because i want to search only those files with the name which are having the extension dot sh so let's give the extension dot sh over here after that you need to give the pipe symbol what this pipe symbol will do whatever the output of this particular command you have the output of this one will be the input to whatever you are going to write over here so the very first thing what i will write that is take all the arguments over here okay so whatever the output you got from here right so it will be uh, uh, treated as a input to this part and this is taking those part as a standard input right apart from that what you need to write next is grep you want to grep grep means search or do the filter right so on what word you want to filter so the word is basically scale right so this is my string so using this command what i am going to do i am finding all the files in the current working directory or inside whatever the directory i have inside that i am finding only those files that are having dot sh in their extension and then i am grepping only those lines in my file which are having the word or string scale in it right so this is the purpose or this is the command which you can use to just look for the files with an extension dot sh and has the occurrence of the string scale in it right let's come back to the next question so how to make a process persistent after the shell dies so this is just a scenario based question you might being asked like how you can run the process in the background so how to do it so to make a process persistent after the shell dies you can use a tool called as a noha let me write it 
the name is no hub right so no hub is the tool that you can use to make the process persistent even after the shell dies now these methods allows you to detach a process from the current shell session and keep it running even after you close the terminal or log out so how to do it so you just need to write no hub and then whatever command you are going to run right let's say i'm just running the ls command and after that you need to write ampersand uh, yeah okay after that you need to write ampersand so this is making sure that the program or the command whatever you have written over here that is running in the background and even if your shell you close your shell that the this process will not die and this process will keep running in the background right so the no hub command ensures that the process continues running even if the shell session is terminated the ampersand at the end runs the command in the background basically the no hub command redirects the standard output and standard error of the process to a file named as no hub dot out in the current directory right and you can also specify a different output file using the hyphen o option if you don't want the default file name then in that case you can just change the file name also but apart from that the default file is the no hub dot out in the current directory it will just output whatever the logs are there it will place in that particular file right apart from that let's come back to the next question in my list that is how to add a user without user add command so whenever you are trying to create a user right you already know that we can directly use the user add tool and with that we can create a user very easily but what if, what if if you don't have the access to run that particular command how you are going to add the user so basically with this particular question the interviewer is trying to ask like how you are logically whether you are clear or not behind the scene what is happening if you are running the user add command so whether you know the process or not right so what the steps i am going to follow in this case is let me write it the very first thing what i can do is add an entry of the user details in the etc password file etc then p a w s w g right so whenever you are going to create a user you will see that one entry will be created inside this particular file so when you are not using the user add command then you need to manually create that entry or write that entry in this particular file for the new user right apart from that also you need to make the entry in the group right it is a group so whenever you create the user a group entry will also be created inside the etc group right so these things are happening by the command user add directly but if that command you are not running then in that case you can understand that behind the scene these things are happening apart from that what you can do that you can change the password for the user password and then whatever the user have you have created that username you can pass so it will ask you to change the password for that particular user so that particular thing you can also do then once the user has been created after that what you need to do you can switch to that particular user and then you can verify whether the password which you have set is working or not whether your user is created or not so all these things you can check and this is how you are going to manually create a user right so i hope these questions were pretty useful for you and you were able to understand what i am trying to dictate if you have any doubts in these questions or if you have any other questions to put in the comment section so that i can uh, explore more on those questions and i can come up in my next video till then bye bye